The Strategic Hot Box with Dr. Brandy Love Stankovic. Discussing leadership, business, and how to take control of your life and achieve greatness. From the streets of Las Vegas, energized, informed, and never diluted. It's time to kick some ass. Welcome back to the Strategic Hot Box. It's your girl, Dr. Brandy Stankovic. Thank you for being here today. We're going to talk about a pretty important topic, and that is finding your own visibility, finding your voice, being visible in an invisible role. And we have a pretty killer Strategic Hot Box guest with us today, Nicole Wright, and she will share her stories and some strategies that you can take with you starting today. So let's rock and roll. When it comes to being visible or feeling invisible, I'm sure all of us that are listening or watching today have been in that place where you feel invisible, feel like your voice isn't heard, feel like there's more that you could be doing to, to have an impact on, on your organization. And I think a lot of aspiring leaders can share in that. And it may be just feeling visible or invisible um, in a personal sense or from a work or professional standpoint. So maybe you are a leader that there's a lot of leaders that are at your same level, or you're in a, such a big organization that some of those, that impact gets lost, or maybe your department doesn't necessarily have direct member or client contact. And I know I will hear that story from a lot of different people that work in say marketing or HR or um, back office operations, when they don't feel like they have as much of an impact on the organizational goals, when in reality, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to hit any of the frontline staff wouldn't be able to hit or people in the field wouldn't be able to hit those goals. And so we want to make sure that that everybody has a chance or knows how to strive to be more visible in the roles that they're in. And how do you really change that perception that that you might have of yourself uh, or the role that you have or the voice that you have? And I feel like this concept really does apply off the, you know, off the outside of the, the work office and out of the office and off the field, I should say, as well. Um, and I applied this and was thinking about this in preparation for this episode with my son. So my son plays soccer. He's eight years old and he played soccer when he was younger and then took a bit of a sabbatical. I don't know. What do you take when you're a young little kid? But he took some time off and then he just joined a team this year and is getting back into it. And he's always been playing with his brother and things, but he hasn't been playing. And a lot changes between the ages of five and eight when it comes to any sort of team sports. Now we have positions and now we have strategy and defense and offense. And when you're five or four, you know, you're just chasing a ball around the field on any sport, right? So nonetheless, he he joins this team and he gets out there and he's joining an established team that has established players um, in established positions. And because of that, he's getting kind of lost in the mix. Now, mind you, he's eight. They're all eight. None of them are professional athletes, but they are somewhat kind of. Uh, I don't know, They just there's favorites on, on the field. And after the game, or we were talking about it, my husband and I were talking about it, just saying, how can we be better champions for him? Now, I'm not talking about being one of those psycho moms on the side of the field that was like, this, my kid must, but more just say, how can we help him progress? How can we help him learn to be an advocate for himself? And what I mean by that is for him to go up to the coach and say, hey, I want to go back in or, hey, I want to try to play offense instead of defense or, hey, I want to learn this new skill while we're in practice. And just being able to have the confidence to have that voice for himself. Well, the same applies and is true in leadership as well. The most important advocate is, is us and being able to stand up and say, I want to get better or how can I get better? How can I continue to be more visible and make a bigger impact? Another example of this is our colleague, many of you know that are listening, Zach Christensen. He's worked at an organization prior where it was a very big organization, a billion dollar organization. And in the role that he was in, there were 300 other managers in that exact same role. And add that to the fact that he was working remote in a more low impact market than some of the other markets. And he had to really fight to make sure that he could build visibility and continue to grow within that organization. 
by asking a lot of questions, by getting involved with his boss, by by making sure that he creates opportunities to connect with different people in the organization. And so persistence and performance really paid off for him and he was able to grow and, and build a lot of accolades. And it's it's true for all of us as well. So no matter how big your organization is, making sure that you're fighting for yourself and fighting for the things uh, that you're working on and making an impact. So if you are feeling invisible and you're listening to this, first, I want you to know that I think you're amazing. And I think there are going to be a lot of people out there that feel the exact same way. So sending some love your direction and knowing that you can do this. And a couple strategies that I feel, and then we're going to bring our subject matter expert to feel out what her strategies are, is first to make sure that you're building that network and the influence within that network. So we've talked a lot about it on other uh, podcasts, but how can you get out in the field, get involved in your community, your business community, your leadership community, your personal community, and continue to connect with those individuals, um, be grateful for, for what they they've how they've helped and supported you and how you can help uh, you know use those as momentum second is to get involved in everything you can volunteer say yes you know ask for opportunities see if there's other ways that you can get involved because sometimes an opportunity isn't obvious to everyone around but if you go in and you say hey I want to be a part of this people will will find you something to do especially when it comes to volunteerism and the final one as I mentioned when it comes to my son it comes to you advocate for yourself you have to be your number one advocate. If you can believe in yourself, then other people will also believe in you. So I'd like now to introduce, formally introduce our guest, Nicole Wright, and she's going to share her journey in leadership and how maybe progressing from being invisible to owning your own business and creating influence and being one of the most uh, you know influential people that are out there and what she does. So she is a program engagement consultant for Acosta. She's also the founder of Savvy and Social. She's a regional ambassador for new, which is a network of executive women. So I'm excited to learn more about that. She's got her bachelor's in business and in fashion merchandising and business administration from Sam Houston State University. She's also, I just found out, a whiskey enthusiast. So it's a shame. Yeah, it's a shame that she's coming at us from Skype because we could, you know, be whiskey enthusiasts together. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, she's a proud wife uh, of, of a Texas high school football coach, too. So I imagine that she's on the sidelines cheering and becoming advocates for her kids as well. So I'd like you to join me in welcoming Nicole. Hello there. Hello. I'm super excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. So you have a, a child that plays high school football? No, I don't. So my husband is a high school football coach at oh, Arlington Bowie High School. And I have a stepson. He's actually in the band. And they uh, go to rivals. Oh, do they really? Oh, so yeah. the, your your stepson is marching on the field where the yes. football, oh, that's fun. But I think yes. that you should be able to cheer for band nerds, too. I was one of those. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It's fun. He loves it. So and so my husband's excited that he's, you know, involved. That's so amazing. That's so tell us. Pretty busy. Are they? And do you do you ever lose your voice from all the shouting from the sides? I do every now and then. Yeah, yeah, it gets kind of crazy sometimes. I love that. <laughs> so tell us about your journey in leadership. Yeah, so I think ever since I could remember, the word leader has always uh, excited me. So my maiden name was Woodson, and you know, in elementary school, whenever you're lined up alphabetically, I was always dead last because of my last name. But anytime I had the opportunity to be the you know the the line leader or the playtime leader, the story time leader, that excited me. I didn't really know exactly what my role or my responsibilities were. Being a leader at five, I was probably just being bossy because <laughs> in my mind, I was thinking, you know, everybody should listen to me because I'm the leader. And Naturally. I think my leadership skills have evolved a little bit since then. But um, yeah, I've always been that person to want to take on a leadership role because what I learned early on is the more I volunteer and the more I take on a position in leadership, the more I learn mm -hmm. about myself, about other people, about how to effectively lead and communicate and all those things that leadership comes with. Because I think a lot of times um, leaders, they have to be able to effectively listen. Um, yeah, you have to be amazing listeners to be a good leader. You have to, of course, amazingly be able to communicate the priorities to your teams. And so I've kind of learned those skills along the way. So it's been um, a lot of fun. It's been a huge journey. And I take time to invest in my professional development. And then with Acosta, I started out here as an area manager. And at the time when I took the position, I was like, okay, this is going to be great 
for me to be able to um, take this position, learn a little bit. This will be a great stepping stone to my dream job. Mm. And eight years later, I'm still here. So I've managed to kind of turn this position into my dream job. Oh, wow. um, so I had, I had a lot to learn because I had management skills. And I've been in management roles, but I didn't really know much about grocery merchandising or mm. the retail environment itself, um, especially the grocery business. I did not know that there was a, a whole science behind it. Mm. So I had a huge learning curve. Mm. So at that point, I decided I was going to learn from my team. So I would go out, I would work with my team, I would talk to them and um, pick their brains about, you know, what they do and why they do what they do and how they do it. And that in turn helped me better support them. Mm -hmm. And so um, after being area manager, I was promoted several times. And then I started thinking that I needed more professional development. I was getting a lot of hands on training and a lot of skills just by working with my teams, but I needed more uh, political savvy and being able to communicate to other leaders that were in my office. Um, so that's when I got involved with the Network of Executive Women. Mm -hmm. So they they have monthly professional development webinars that take place. And so I started by doing those. And then I realized that there was an actual region here for North Texas. And I remember attending my first regional event thinking, OK, you know, this is another networking group. This is I'm awkward with networking. I don't really, yeah. I'm not super, super comfortable with going out and just introducing myself to people. Um, but during that event, I felt something and it was very, very powerful. And I was like, okay, I think I found my niche mm -hmm. because I had been a part of many nonprofit networking organizations before I'd go to the meetings, not really get much out of it. But I left that meeting feeling really, really energized and connected to the people that I was sitting with. And I didn't know them. Like I went to the meeting, met them. It was, we had a phenomenal speaker. I think it was Dr. Beatrice Berry. Mm -hmm. She had us laughing. She had us crying. She had mm -hmm. us singing. We danced. We did a lot in the span of two hours. And I left feeling like, okay, these these ladies that I just met today, they're going to be in my tribe. Yeah, and so, life. Um, I started volunteering with NU. I started out as the membership co-chair. Well, actually, I started out taking pictures. Mm -hmm. So I was on the photography team. And at the time, I, I know the, whatever camera phone I was using, the pictures were blurry. <laughs> and it was not great quality. So but that's that's how I, I volunteered. I was like, sure, mm -hmm. pick me. I'll take pictures. And so, uh, so I started out doing that. And then I was co-chair of membership all while being market manager at Acosta. Um, and then a year and a half, I believe, or two years later, I was asked to become the regional secretary, which is an officer role. I didn't really know exactly what the duties were, but I, I said yes. And I realized that it was literally, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And I think six months into my role, I was like, I don't like the name secretary. That sounds like I'm sitting in a corner taking notes while sure. everybody else so I renamed my title to Director of Communication. <laughs> so, Love it. That's better to me. So yeah, so that, that's where I am today. I'm the Director of Communications for New North Texas. I am also the ambassador for um, the Network of Executive Women with Acosta because Acosta is a partner of New. And um, I can effectively say that New has definitely helped me grow my career because um, in 2016, I was invited to speak on a panel at the at News Executive Leaders Forum. Wow. And that gave me so much exposure and I learned so much from that experience. So it's been a whirlwind, but it's yeah. been a fun, fun ride. That's amazing. You said a lot of different things there in that piece, but one of the ones that I love the most is is getting out with your team and sometimes the best way to learn is to go get yeah. your hands, you know, Roll your sleeves up, get your hands through, just get in and, and make it happen with the team. Another thing that you said that really stood out was listening and just having an open ear and, and being open to new opportunities for development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's listening is super, super important because I think a lot of times people, they, they hear you, like you, you hear what people are saying, but you're not actively listening. Like you're right. listening to respond and you're not listening to truly understand Absolutely. what they're trying to tell you. Because mm -hmm. not, not all the time people say exactly what's on their mind. And there you have to pick up on those, um, those hidden clues as to what they're actually trying to tell you. Absolutely. And I think that uh, another thing that you said that was really powerful is the idea of volunteering and just putting yeah. yourself out there. I absolutely believe in that. We've had a, a webinar or excuse me, a, a podcast on volunteering to the top and just anything you do taking pictures is, is beautiful. <laughs> Renaming yeah. your title is also amazing and hilarious. And just saying that I'll just do anything I can to just get involved and, and, and pull energy from this. 
Yeah, because with especially with new, I've seen a lot of women um, just grow their career, and I would like model want to model my career after them. And I knew that they were heavily involved in new, so I was like, okay, I, I figured out early once I once I joined that that's exactly what I needed to do. I had to become a volunteer and I had to um, put a lot of effort into it because with any type of organization or anything you do, it's only going to be as powerful as much work as you put into it. So if you put a lot into it, you're definitely going to get a lot out. So mm-hmm. for anybody that's joining a new organization, whether it's a new company or a new networking organization, whatever it is, you have to be able to put yourself out there and volunteer and do things that are a little bit outside of the box mm. just to to, uh, to get the most out of it. Absolutely. And there's going to be mm-hmm. people that, that are listening and watching us today that maybe don't didn't have the leadership skills at five years old or have a more um, kind of introverted personality. And in those moments, right. utilizing whatever skills that they have in those and pushing themselves in whatever boundaries they feel you know comfortable outside of their own kind of box to, to get involved. I remember in college, I, I I want I joined Delta Sigma Pi, which is a business fraternity. And yeah. at the time it was like, I feel like I have to do this thing in college and whatever. And and I remember standing at the door with my friends who were partying and just hanging. And I'm like, I've got a got this oversized suit on that was probably my mom's that she had given me. I don't even know. But I stood at the door yeah. going Yeah, exactly. And I was going there going, should I be doing this? I don't want to do this, whatever. And then I went and Delta Sigma Pi ended up changing my life. And they ended up being my best friends to this day, the people that I met in that that fraternity. So sometimes we have to just push ourselves to go and to be. You do. You do. Because you can't be, it's hard to be on 100% of the time, like all the time, day in and day out. Sometimes I just, I'm like, I just want to walk around in my sweatpants and my tank top and just be lazy. But Mm -hmm. a lot of times, yeah, you do. You definitely have to push yourself to do things that you don't want to do because normally that's when you get amazing opportunities because that first step of doing it sometimes is the hardest. But once you get into it, then you you catch a groove and then you start to, to ride the wave. And then it's then that's when you see the success in it. Do people have to win awards or accolades or be top performers in order to be visible? No. Absolutely not. I've won one award with Acosta, and it was kind of second place. So, uh, and the, <laughs> kind of the funny story I have about that is, um, so we have what's called the, the Chairman's Award, and I believe it was twenty six. I think it was twenty sixteen. Um, my my boss, he comes up to me and he's like, "Hey, you know what? I want to nominate you for a Chairman's Award. Um, what should I? You know, what do you want me to include in it?" I was like, "No, no, no. I'll write it." I'll write it out for myself because mm-hmm. <laughs> I know I, I knew everything that I had done that year. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'll write it out for myself. I'll email it to you. All you have to do is copy and paste it. Mm-hmm. And so that's exactly what happened. So basically, I wrote my own nomination, which turned out to be good because I did win. There was there's different levels, but I won the the second, the, the silver uh, award for the term, chairman's award. And with that, I didn't really get much. I got the the recognition. I got I took a certificate home, mm-hmm. and there was a little bit of bonus that came with it. But nice. I didn't get more visibility from that. Mm-hmm. I had people emailing me saying congratulations on your award. But the day after the recognition ceremony was over, people kind of forgot about it. Mm-hmm. So it was one of those things where I was like, okay, this is this was nice, and the excitement lasted for all of twenty four to 48 hours. Mm-hmm. Um, I was probably excited for about it a little bit longer, but after after it was over, nobody really nobody really remembered. Mm-hmm. I think so that, no. so you don't have to be an award winner in order to be yeah. special. And another thing that you're saying there is, is you were advocating for yourself. You wrote your own nomination. And I yeah. think uh, like hint, hint to anybody that's listening or watching today, if you've, anybody that's ever won an award has been involved in their own nomination. I mean, that's, you have to, I think that so, so often people ask me to recommend them for things. I'm like, cool, write it (laughs) and I'll I'll sign it. And I'd be happy to put my name out there Mm -hmm. for you. But, but that's, I mean, that's what it takes. If somebody wants to win an award, go after it, but you don't have to, in order to be visible. Is there good and bad visibility in an organization? Um, I, I don't think visibility works like publicity. You know how people say there's any publicity is good publicity. That's not, I don't think that's true for visibility because I can remember back to a certain moment in my career where as I was market manager, we were working on this really big high profile project and I was busy with stuff and I just wasn't taking it as seriously as I should have been. And I was getting emails from some of the VPs asking questions about it. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's fine. We've got it. We've got it under control. We've got it handled. 
but um, it wasn't fine. Things were absolutely falling apart. And so I was excited that that VP emailed me, but it was for absolutely the wrong oh, thing, mm-hmm. you know, because I wasn't, I wasn't on top of it. Like I should have been. Right. And so um, that probably, I don't want to say tarnished uh, my reputation, but it, it just kind of put Impacted. a little bit of a negative spin on my, on the perception he had of me and sure. my work. Cause that was really like our first time working together. And so I had to send him an email and look and say, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I was on top of it, but things just were not going the way that they should have been. Um, so yeah, so now we're, we're still working together. Mm-hmm. And so I've been able to kind of spin that and turn it around to something positive, but I definitely don't think that all visibility really is, good. is good. Yeah. And I agree with you. And I think that that's why it's so important for people to take the control of their and be advocates, you know, take control of their own lives because yes. a lot of times people won't position us in the way that we want to be positioned any either right Absolutely. and i think that can happen with pigeonholing positions oh you're just in marketing or oh you're just in hr you can't possibly have experience in this and maybe the person does or maybe it doesn't matter they're just really good and really energetic and work hard and deserve the chance regardless mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely think everybody deserves a chance to do something a little bit different because here I am. I had my background was in business management. Uh, I had no grocery merchandising experience, no grocery experience whatsoever. And then I'm managing this team. And as a market manager, I had a team of six uh, area managers and at, at one point up to 400 reps. And so it was it was a lot to to be able to manage. And it was a lot of moving pieces and parts to it. But at the same time, it was it was exciting for me because I was learning something different and doing something different. And I don't think I would have been given the opportunity to do anything else um, other than, you know, what the opportunities and stuff that my manager gave to me. Right. And do you think that women versus men have a a different path or different strategies for visibility or should take different strategies? I don't think they should take different strategies. I think women are less likely to be more boastful about the things that they've done and kind of brag on their own accomplishments because we don't want to seem braggadocious. We don't want to be that person that's like, oh, look at me. Look, I've done this. I've done that. I've done this because we've kind of been conditioned to think that that's not a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think men are great with saying, yes, I have experience in doing this. And I've had experience doing what everything that they've done. But for some reason, it doesn't sound as braggadocious when they say it as it does when women say it. So I think the path and the, the way to do it should be the same. It's just the fact that I think women just need to own it. Step everything up. that you've done, own it, say it, talk about it. Speak it, scream it, use social media, your best friend, get your tribe, mm-hmm. write your own nomination, basically. And <laughs> yes. Exactly what you've what you've done and what you've accomplished because it's important. Nobody's gonna come up to you and ask you, you know, what, so what have you accomplished in the last six weeks? That may be a, a random question, but nobody's really gonna do that. So you have absolutely have to advocate for yourself and then also advocate for others. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's super important that if you see another um, woman that's winning, that's doing something amazing, but you kind of see they're not necessarily getting all the recognition that they need, advocate for them, give them, give them their shout out, send an email, send a text, post something about it on social media, do everything that you can to help support other women, because we definitely have to support each other. Absolutely. And you've already shared one funny story. Do you have any others for us today? Um, Yeah. So actually, when I worked for Pitney Bowes for two years and I was a uh, business to business sales, I was an account manager and I was going to a meeting and I had this. It was one of the first meetings that I had with Pitney Bowes. And so I was going to a client's office, walking around, getting the tour, all of that. I was super excited because as I was leaving, the person that I was meeting with was like, yeah, you know, send us the proposal. I think we're going to we're going to sign. So I was super excited. I was like, yes, I made like my first or second sale. Super excited about it. I was walking out the door telling everybody, thank you. Nice to meet you. All of a sudden, smack. I ran straight into the glass. No. <laughs> it was like a win- the Windex commercial with the birds. Like oh I literally ran into the window. You saw my face print, my cheek print, my lip print, my mascara, oh everything. Oh my gosh. It was, yeah, it was, it was kind of traumatic. And then you see people kind of standing up to look over their cubicles to see what happened. And at that point I was like, yep, I'm fine. Great. Just I'll, I'll see you later. And as I'm walking out, I just hear people 
burst out in the laugh. Oh, I'm sure. So oh all I could do gosh. was laugh at myself at that point because I was like, that was so embarrassing. Well, they they could take pictures of your 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 smear on the the window exactly. anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I sent an email to the to the gentleman afterwards. I was like, let me know if I need to come back and clean up that. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. It was oh very my bad. goodness! Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> so, how can someone ensure their voice is heard? Can you share a bold action item or two for us? Um, I, again, I'm going to say write your own nomination. Take your mm -hmm. seat at the table. Um, if you have opinions and ideas about something. Don't be afraid to share them. I, I don't know how many times I've reached out to ask for those opportunities, to ask for those volunteers, to actually let people know what I'm good at and tell them, hey, I'm here. You can you can use me. You can you can volunteer me. I don't mind being voluntold to do anything mm -hmm. as long as, you know, it's going to be a little bit beneficial to me and I have time to do it. Now, I'm not saying go out and say yes to everything, but I think you definitely have to put in the work to get the recognition. So. My takeaway would definitely be you write your own nomination. Do it. Love it. Just do it. So how can people get a hold of you? Get a hold of me. Okay, so on social media, I'm at Savvy Mrs. Wright. And then my business for Savvy and Social is at Savvy and Social One. So that's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm on Snapchat. You can connect with me on LinkedIn at Nicole Wright. Or I think LinkedIn is Savvy Mrs. Wright as well. So that's... Um, well, yeah, online. that's yeah. perfect. And we'll put our information, your information out on the hot box as well. So thank you so awesome. much for being here today. Thanks. I loved learning from you and yes. I love it. Yes. Write your own nomination. Write your own nomination. Just go out and do it. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Let's head out to our shout out. Yes, I'm Teresa Magleta from Malawi and you're listening to Blandy on Hot Box. Thank you to my friends from Malawi for that shout out. And thank you to Nicole for all of that energy. She just has me smiling from ear to ear and, and really excited about all the things that she talked about. So now is my favorite time, your favorite time. It's time to kick some ass. Here's your top five. Number one is to use your network and influence. Use that community. Nicole referred to it as her tribe, those people around you that can support you and making sure that you're advocating for the people around you and supporting their efforts and journeys and celebrating their accomplishments as well. Number two is to volunteer and get involved. Go after it. And also one thing that I love that Nicole said is to tell people that you want to be there. So don't be afraid to volunteer me. Don't be afraid to get me involved. Like, you know, put my name out there because that's important too. People might be afraid that you're too busy or too whatever and, and have, you know, have the conversation and say, hey, I want to be voluntold. I want to be volunteered. Number three is to ask questions. Just like in the example we gave earlier, ask for feedback, ask questions of how you can get involved, ask your boss, ask your peers, ask, you know, and, and listen, right? The listen is the other end of that to hearing all the things that, that you may need to do in order to get your voice out there. Number four is to find a champion. Find somebody that is willing to celebrate your success, that isn't challenged or feels competitive with you and your success, but can love and support and nurture the things that you're doing and be somebody that can be out there championing for you. And number five, the most important, is to advocate for yourself. If you don't advocate for yourself, who's going to? You have to be out there, the one making it happen. Be the champion for yourself. Be your own advocate. Write your own nomination. There's your top five kick ass. So thank you again to Nicole for being here. Thank you to my friends from Malawi for sending a shout out. And thank you to all of you for being here, our Strategic Hotbox tribe, and joining the community that we have. And thank you all of you that have been a part of our social media efforts as well. So if you aren't out there, get out there. We're on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And so on uh, Instagram, it's at Strategic Hotbox and Facebook as well. And of course, you can head out to the website, strategichotbox.com, because we have all all sorts of things that you could possibly want and need and use. We've got the, the guest information out there. We'll have all of their emails and contact and, and organizations and links. And then we have some free worksheets and downloads and all sorts of fun stuff for you to use for those of you that have been part of this effort with us. But I want to close by saying thank you. The Strategic Hotbox would not be what it is today without every single person listening and watching. So thank you to you. Get out there, advocate for yourself, and until I see you again, go kick some ass.